Swift and Tips Podcast. One of the challenges I have faced, or in many too, is uh, how can we prepare for uh, reading and creating those um, architectural concepts? So uh, when someone needs to implement a feature, most of the time we need to uh, uh, investigate well, how are we going to build that, right? Jump into the code is the last part once, well, thank you, it should be the last part once we understand the problem, right? And uh, But how, what would you recommend for those people that maybe are in a, a developer role or senior role and want to become an architect or principal engineers? I know, again, uh, that depends on the company. Maybe um, mm -hmm. uh, at uh, Google, Meta, any other company means something different than for us. But Uh, what would you recommend to see, okay, if you, if you want to become uh, good at system design and an architectural part, uh, what would you recommend? Well, I mean, part of that is going to be asking folks like myself questions. If you have any, <laughs> you, you never, if you know, if you never have to hesitate, if you have questions about, well, I don't understand why we wrote an interface this way or why I may have pushed back on, you know, so like one of the things I try to do when I'm like doing code reviews or, or looking at pull requests is if I make a change, I do try to not just say change this to that, you know, I do try to try to explain why what I, what I'm going to suggest is better if from, in, in, at a sort of a higher level. Um, but as far, I mean, I say, you know, again, It's an interesting question, actually. And so I think that the, the challenge here for junior developers, uh, because a system, especially if you come into an app that's already been built and has a lot of pieces, it can be kind of overwhelming, right? There's a lot of different moving parts. Mm -hmm. um, so part of it maybe is picking a smaller part of the system and trying to really understand how it works and then letting your, you know, trying to understand how it interfaces with the larger systems as a whole, which will then sort of lead you to, to continue to explore how, how, you know, different layers we've built and different modules we've created. I, I, it, it's hard to, I, to me, it's like, even like just reading the code or reading our documentation, which we have a voluminous amount of documentation um, because it's the nature of, of the industry that we're in. Mm -hmm. um, it's helpful to read that stuff, but there's nothing really more. I think I've mostly learned through experimentation and, and, you know, it's like getting, actually getting in there and, and making changes and trying things is probably the best way to learn stuff. Now I have, there are some things that I could recommend you could read. Like I, I have to say probably the, the, one of the books I've read that's had a, one of the bigger impacts on the way I think about architecture is the solid architecture book by, um, Okay, I'm forgetting the name. You know, we all I always call them. We, we can we can leave it in the description if it's yeah. an Amazon. Yeah, feel yeah, feel exactly. sure to me. It's out there, but I mean, he he. Now, I mean, you know, and it's not that he's that his ideas are wholly rich or, or dogma, but he does a really good job, I think, of of explaining like the one of the most important parts of of, of software. Why we write software at all, right? And that's because yeah. software's primary purpose is to change. Honestly, it's not just yeah. about accomplishing something today. It's about being able to react to new features, new business requirements, new platforms to run on, um, as well as, you know, fix a bug that you may have not have realized you created. And that's, that's difficult, right? Because it's, it's such a complicated concept, it's so many yeah. different layers in a software system. So that's really the, 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 the thing that, that I, I would always encourage developers to try to understand is, you know, what, what, the point of, layers of abstraction or the point of encapsulating things in the separate classes and trying to trying to minimize what each piece does, trying to minimize what part, what parts of the system have to know about other parts of the system. The whole reason you do that, sure, it'd be much easier if we sat down and wrote the entire app in a single function, right? It's just you know, <laughs> pain and it does it all, right? You know, and I've, I've seen code written that way, right? And I, I, did, I did it in my, in my first year of the college. That wasn't a good yeah, idea. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so we all have, right? I mean, sometimes it's just like, you know, it's like, I don't want to, I'd rather just pass exactly this thing rather than set up some sort of protocol or come up with some more abstract way of dealing with things. But the, the point of abstraction is that allows different parts of the system to vary independently and, and to change at different rates. And so really the whole goal is if I want to add a new feature, I don't want to have to rewrite the entire app, right? I don't want to have to touch everything everywhere. 
that you know you have a good design is if you can make make a minimal change over here or even better just create a new thing and plug it in and now you have you have additional functionality you have additional um it, things that your app can do then that's that's a good sign of, of a good architecture and i've i've been at places where and this is i think always true you know, it's one thing that, that whenever you start a project or write a program it's it's never going to be perfect it's hard to get perfect yeah. architecture ever really you know because it's so much complexity and yeah. so you have to you know part of the job is continuing to to iterate over things and improve as you go and some you know and sometimes business doesn't quite understand that you know they would rather that you wrote it once and never touch it again right so that, you know, <laughs> not basically you know and maybe in their mind it's like well you're wasting time and didn't you already write that why do you have to go back in and and retouch that feature or, or you know the dreaded that, refactor word right that people that, be so that's scared. always yeah. a fight be, 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 uh, from products versus development right like you know, justifying yeah. each other. Why are you already exactly. wasting time on refining? And, and so part of our job, and I, I mean, that's another sort of thing I had as an advocate, as a, as a principal engineer, I'm kind of an advocate for software development as a as a whole, right? And so it's part, it's like yeah. educating the business people that this is actually a necessary and natural part of, of software development is, is refining it continuously, right? Because everything, especially in a mobile environment, you know, where... New, you know, a new version of the operating system comes out at least once a year and it's always major changes all the time, right? It's a very fast platform to adapt to. Um, so expecting you got it perfectly in, in the very first time is, is just un, not realistic, right? And so the goal, it, it, as you live in a software project, it, you realize the places that maybe you didn't realize that you want to separate these concerns out, you know, that, that, that you expect these things are going to need to vary in different ways or that you want to be able to reuse this component and you, so you, you buried it in this other feature, you know, there's always that kind of work where you need to quote refactor things all mm -hmm. the time. And, and the, the, the sign of a good architecture is that it makes it easy, right? That, that the refactoring yeah. you have to do is not like a catastrophic blow the whole thing up and start over kind of an endeavor, but more it's like, okay, we make a couple isolated changes here and boom, now we have more flexibility. And, and so that's, that's kind of a thing that you learn through experience, I think, and being involved in a lot of different projects, you know, uh, it's software development isn't really something you can learn just by reading books or watching podcasts or anything like that. Right? <laughs> you know, it, it, it's, it's part of the, the inputs, but like anything, like learning to play the violin, I can watch YouTube videos all day on violin, but I don't own a violin and I can't, then I'm never going to learn how to play it. Right. So you have to, it's, it's a, it's a craft as well as a science and you need to, you need to do it. That's so, you know, the most, most software engineers that I, I think are really good at it are people who just love to code and maybe have their own side projects, or at least will continue thinking about things all the time. It's not just the sort of a job that they do, but almost more of an obsession really, you know, that it's something that they find <laughs> fascinating and, and would maybe, maybe would do it anyway, even if they weren't being paid for it. Um, to a certain degree anyway, you know, I, not that yeah. I'm saying I like being paid for it. Let's, 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 let's make you understand <laughs> But, you know, and so that's, that's really, you know, I think having your own projects and, and being willing to even take the code you're with, you're working on in your company and, and perform some experimentation and you'd be able to, able to see what happens if I make this change here, what happens if I try to break this out is, you know, you got to play with it, right? I think that's really, yeah. that's the best way to really learn.